Next presenter is uh, Arda Melkonyan. Uh, Arda Melkonyan is a doctoral candidate in UCLA, uh, where she is pursuing a PhD in social research methodology. Arda Melkonyan's research focuses on the Armenian genocide, examining theological interpretations of the genocide by Armenian clergy, and issues of identity. Melkonyan has presented her research at scholarly conferences for the Ar American Anthropological Association, American Educational Research Association, Annual Scholars Conference on the Holocaust and the Church, Middle East Studies Association, and Western Psychological Association. Lastly, Arda has presented her research on the Armenian Genocide at international conferences in Istanbul, Turkey, Yerevan, Armenia, and Jerusalem, Israel. Uh, her recent publications include an entry in the Armenian Genocide, the Essential Re Re Reference Guide, titled uh, Armenian Genocide Survivor Testimonies, UCLA Collection, as well as a chapter, Gender and Survival Options, in the Islamized Armen Armenians Conference volume, published by the Ranting Foundation. Your turn. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to thank the selection committee for inviting me to present today and to the staff that is doing such a superb job um, organizing this conference and also the sponsoring organizations. It's good to be back in Istanbul enjoying the hospitality of the Harant Dink Foundation family. My paper is about the Armenian evangelical Protestant clergy challenging definitions of Armenian identity. It is noteworthy that I am speaking about this topic in the birthplace of the Armenian evangelical movement, which started in Pera, Istanbul, 170 years ago. The Armenian Apost Apostolic Church has played an important role in cultural identity maintenance within the Armenian community, a fact that is widely acknowledged by Armenians. As it has carved out the boundaries of Armenian identity, the Apostolic Church has dictated that a fundamental requirement for Armenianness is a membership in the Apostolic Church. Therefore, it is inconceivable to be an Armenian without belonging to the Apostolic Church. An Armenian evangelical is considered an anomaly by most Armenians. For members of the Armenian Protestant community, these views have led them to feel like second-class Armenians as they have struggled to find their place in the larger Armenian society. Drawing on interviews with Armenian evangelical clergy, as well as ecclesiastical writings and publications, this paper will demonstrate the ways in which Armenian evangelical clergy are challenging and expanding definitions of Armenian identity by insisting that ethnicity should not be defined by religious faith. Rejecting the assessment that their Protestant affili affiliation makes them quote unquote not Armenian or not fully Armenian. They claim that their, quote, God-given Armenian name and racial lineage, unquote, by asserting that one can be evangelical, Catholic, atheist, and still be an Armenian, they lay the groundwork for Armenians with different religious beliefs, such as Islamized Armenians, to claim their Armenian identity, thereby undermining efforts to exclude them from the Armenian community. I'd like to briefly address issues of positionality. The researchers' positionality in relation to the study participants in qualitative studies takes on even greater significance when examining contentious or controversial and sensitive topics. And Armenian identity clearly is a contentious subject. Whether the researcher is an insider or outsider to the community being studied may lead to issues of advantage and disadvantage. For instance, an insider's knowledge of the community may provide additional insight, but may also increase the possibility of bias during various stages of the study. Awareness and monitoring of potential biases helps minimize the likelihood of flawed research. So for purposes of full disclosure, I am a member of the Armenian Evangelical Church, and my father is a Protestant minister. As a member of this religious community, I am accepted as an insider when I'm conducting research. 
A little background for those who are not familiar with the Armenian community. There are three main denominations, apostolic or orthodox, Catholic, and evangelical. The evangelicals are the smallest of the three denominations. In 1989, Reverend Dadak Jan estimated that the evangelicals constitute only 0.6% of the entire Armenian population of the world. In 2000, Chilingirian estimated that evangelicals number 50 to 70,000 worldwide. Three years ago, when I interviewed Reverend Tutikian, the executive director of the Armenian Evangelical World Council, he assessed their numbers to be approximately 100,000. So approximately 1% of the Armenian population is evangelical, 2% is Catholic, and 96% is Orthodox. On a side note, as far as which name to use to refer to this community, whether to use evangelical or Protestant, or in Armenian, Avedaranagan, which means of the gospel. Um, in the United States, there are many evangelicals who do not wish to use this term, because the term is, is associated with Christian fundamentalism. Since several of the churches are members of mainline Protestant denominations, such as Presbyterian or United Church of Christ, members do not like the label evangelical. On the other hand, as Chilingirian points out, it is not politically correct to call them Protestant. The leadership discourages the use of this label because it reinforces the narrative of the apostolic church that the evangelicals protested and split from the church. Reverend Tutikian explains that the label is not historically accurate since the founders did not intend to leave the church but were excommunicated. I decided to use evangelical because this is the name that the founders chose. And this is how the group self-identifies today. Um, I also want to give you a background on the methodology. While we conducted interviews with clergy lasting two to three hours, um, and I will just use one of those interviews for this paper. and. Um, I will also use one of the publications because we have very little time. I will use um, a publication by Reverend Barkev Darakjian, and the title is Armenian Evangelical Identity, Historical and Theological Perspectives, which was published in 1989. Reverend Darakjian has served as the editor of official publications for the Armenian Evangelical Churches in the Middle East and in North America. And the interview that I will use is um, one that we conducted with Reverend Bernard Gokuzan in 2011. And Reverend Gokuzan was also a leader in the community. He was elected twice to serve as the leader of the Union of Armenian Evangelical Churches in North America, which is a fellowship of 25 churches in the United States and Canada. The majority of Armenians, including atheists, are supporters of the Armenian Apostolic Church. For many Armenians, one sign of cultural identity is membership in the Apostolic Church. It is inconceivable to be an Armenian without belonging to the Apostolic Church. Therefore, Armenian Protestants do not seem to be fully Armenian. And names such as Armenian Evangelical or Armenian Catholic are considered aberrations by Armenians in general. The Armenian Apostolic Church is perceived as a ch state church and religious diversity is seen as a threat to ethnic unity. <coughs> there is a widespread notion that the Armenian evangelical community is not Armenian. According to Darak Jan, at the time when the evangelical denomination was established, they were under attack from the apostolic leaders and laypersons who asserted that the Ar evangelicals were not Armenian. He continues that there are still many Armenians today who consider evangelicals as second-class Armenians. When the church was, evangelical church was established, um, the Turkish language was used in the services. And use of the Turkish language in Armenian evangelical services led to accusations of anti-Armenianism. Turkish was the official language of the Ottoman Empire 
as well as the language of the majority of Armenian population um, in certain regions in the empire. <clears throat> the evangelicals had a message to deliver to their neighbors, the message of salvation through Jesus Christ. And they felt that the message should be delivered in Turkish, the language that their compatriots would understand. So therefore, the majority of Armenian evangelical worship services were held in Turkish. The hymns were sung in Turkish. The Bible was read in Turkish. The prayers were offered in Turkish, and the sermons were given in Turkish. My grandfather was one of those who was a member of the evangelical church, and I still remember him reciting the Lord's Prayer, Psalm 23rd, and he would say, Rab Chobanam Dar. So he was one of those who didn't know Armenian, but he would express his faith and his belief using the Turkish language. Now, there were exceptions um, in towns and villages where Armenian was spoken. So in those areas, the services were held in Armenian. Another reason which led the apostolics to dismiss the evangelicals as Armenian was their lack of interest in the national cause. This led to the evangelicals withdrawing from cultural events to concentrate on preaching the gospel. In 1846, the Evangelical Church of Armenia was inaugurated as a church and was forced to declare itself a new millet, which means nation. And as a result of that the fact, the evangelicals were thrown out of the Armenian Apostolic or National Church they were officially denied the name Armenian. Since there could not be two Armenian nations in the Ottoman Empire, the evangelicals were forced to accept the label Protestant Millet. So here we have an example of an imposed identity on them, where they cannot identify as Armenian, but instead have to take on the label Protestant Millet. Turkish officials would ask, are you Armenian or a Protestant? And the person had to say, I am Armenian, meaning apostolic, or I am a Protestant. This name and status were forced upon the community. And this is an example of the powerful entity imposing an identity on the weak. Darakcian writes, the sin of dividing our people belonged to the patriarch of the Armenian Apostolic Church in Istanbul. He thought that by driving out the evangelical dissidents from the Armenian Apostolic Church, he could also deny them the Armenian nationality, which was the birthright of all Armenians, regardless of their religious beliefs." End quote. The newly established community began performing the Armenian evangelical identity, resulting in a dramatic cultural change. Their practices changed. They stopped venerating the saints and crossing themselves. They stopped observing the traditional feasts and holidays. The many changes in their lifestyle led people to say, you must be a Protestant. Yesterday, Professor Tolelian spoke of scripts. And it seems this community had chosen a particular script. And by performing their evangelical identity, they were distinguishing themselves from non-evangelicals. Yet there seems to be a desire to be recognized by the other, the apostolic community, and to justify their existence. Even every few years, a clergyman will give a lecture about the con contributions of the Armenian evangelicals to the Armenian nation. There seems to be this need to be for acceptance and um, to prove themselves to the non-evangelical community. Darakchan eventually concludes, and I'm quoting, no, the Armenian evangelical church and community have no apologies to offer to anyone. Our past 143 years of peaceful and fruitful existence within the Armenian communities at large should dissipate even the tiniest shred of doubt about our unity and solidarity with the Armenian people, end quote. Scholars contend that it is members of non-dominant groups that challenge definitions of identity. As a minority group, Armenian evangelicals seem to be challenging definitions imposed on them by the apostolic church and actively seeking new definitions of Armenianness. 
Darakchan explains that the word Armenian denotes a people who are either from Armenia or belong to the Armenian race, whereas the word Protestant or evangelical refers to the church fellowship or denomination to which a person belongs. If Armenianism denotes both the nation and the apostolic church, then what about the Armenian athe atheists who are not Christian? Darakchan writes, quote, we evangelical Armenians have put to shame those who attempted to rob us of our God-given Armenian name and racial lineage. We have proved that one's religious faith has nothing to do with his, her nationality. One can be evangelical, Catholic, atheist, or deist, and can still be an Armenian. We should be aware of the fact that the basis of our national unity is not and cannot be the church, any church, anymore, but our race, our language, and the historic Armenian nation." End quote. Lastly, I want to read an excerpt from an interview with Reverend Bernard Gukuzian. I asked him, so what makes an Armenian? How do you define who is an Armenian? And the first thing he said is, many Armenians look at Protestants as not Armenian. For example, if I would take the attitude they have, then okay, I'm not an Armenian. I will assume I'm not Armenian. And then he immediately adds, but I cannot do that. I cannot I deny my identity. The problem is, how do you define your ethnicity? Is it religion or ethnic background? If, for example, you define your ethnicity with a religion, anyone who is an Orthodox Armenian apostolic is Armenian. Those who are not, they are out. So it depends on your definition, and how and why is that your definition? So I asked him again, so how would you define an Armenian? And he said, I feel ethnically I consider myself an Armenian. My forefathers were Armenian, and therefore I would consider myself an Armenian. So here we see Reverend Gekuzan initially saying, if I were to accept the definition imposed on me, then I would have to deny my identity. And he is being forced to consider that. And immediately, though, he rejects it and says, I can't do that. I'm an Armenian. I'm going to claim my right to be an Armenian. And I'm going to redefine what it means to an Armenian, refusing to accept what others are imposing on him. So he is rejecting definitions of Armenian identity imposed on him and insisting that ethnicity should not be defined by religious faith. I thank you for your kind attention.